Once upon a time, there was a boy named Trent, whose very presence could send chills down anyone's spine. From a young age, Trent refused to act like a normal child. He treated his friends like slaves, bossing them around and making them do his bidding. His siblings lived in constant fear, as he would beat them up and bite them until they bled. Trent didn't just stop at physical harm eh? he would digest their blood and find cruel delight in it. When he was angry, he would unleash a barrage of foul, racist insults at his parents, screaming things like, FK you, daddy, you ugly bald hobo. Trent's malevolence knew no bounds. One day, he came across the Mirror of Change, an enchanted artifact said to reveal the path to redemption. Most would gaze into it and feel the weight of their sins, but not Trent. Furious at the mirror's reflection, he smashed it into a million pieces, shattering the last hope for his salvation. His parents, unable to handle their monstrous son any longer made a decision that no parent should have to make. They sent Trent to an adult prison in a section reserved for the most deranged criminals like him. But even there, Trent thrived on chaos. He masterminded an escape, continuing his crime spree with even more fury. When the authorities finally caught up with him, they sent him to therapy in a desperate attempt to rehabilitate him. But Trent, true to his wicked nature, arrived at the therapist's office completely nude forcing the therapist to look at his private parts, laughing maniacally the entire time. As Trent grew older, his evil only intensified. By the time he turned 21, he was one of the most dangerous criminals in the world day and he couldn't have been happier. There was no sign of remorse, no trace of guilt. That is, until he crossed paths with an old hag, frail and hunched over with age, who dared to cross him on the street. With no hesitation, Trent shoved her to the ground sneering as he struck her with her own walking stick and snatched her purse. But the old woman was no ordinary hag. She was a witch, and as she lay on the ground, she cursed Trent. For all the pain you've caused, your evil shall be your undoing. She hissed. Trent, of course, laughed it off and went on his way. The next morning, something was different. When his parents asked him to do a chore, he did it without hesitation. When he saw his siblings, he spoke kindly to them, offering them compliments instead of violence. Trent's parents were shocked, but inside his own mind, Trent was screaming. His consciousness raged against this sudden goodness, refusing to be nice, refusing to change. In his mind, a battle was taking place. His evil self as a real Trent a fought against the goodness that had suddenly taken over. But the more he fought, the more he realized he was losing. His good side, kind and gentle grew stronger with each passing moment. Finally, in a last act of defiance, Trent's evil self confronted the good version of him face to face. I won't let you take over. The evil Trent snarled, ready to strike. But the good side did something unexpected. He didn't fight back. Instead, he hugged the evil Trent. A warm, comforting embrace. The evil Trent howled in agony as he felt his darkness dissolve his malevolence purged from existence. With one final scream, the evil Trent was wiped out, gone forever, never to bother anyone again. The curse had done its work. Trent was no longer the monster he had been, and the world was free from his terror. Thirty years later, Trent, now a humble and kind man, opened an institution for the criminally insane. He dedicated his life to helping others who had lost their way hoping to prevent them from becoming the monster he once was. Though the evil Trent was gone, the memory of his deeds remained, a reminder of the power of redemption and the curse that had made it possible.